All right, people, so the deck profile for Moonlight, Lunar Light, so this deck is being removed from Daily Drills, which is fine. Uh, it has had its time, but I uh, just decided the deck to be just a little bit too weak. It's missing a couple cards. And before you're wondering, like, where's this milk card? You know, Daniel, they got, like, a, a monster reborn and a road attack. This was before that. This was way before that. I believe that that card got revealed, like, yesterday, and this deck has already been destined to be taken off of... Uh, daily duel for at least a week now. So yeah, so I, I would love I would love to use that card I think that card would have definitely been helpful uh, You guys know I always talk about one per card in particular that I would love for them to have but uh, Mustard born slash rota card. That's also nice as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the deck profile for uh, This uh, Luna light deck this new night Luna light get my opinions about everything Why I did the things that I did and you guys gonna go ahead and take the deck Make it yourself, more power to you. I believe this deck actually topped in some tournament in OCD and got like 4th place. Which is just amazing with how just a one trick pony this deck is. If it can attack over something, it's really not doing something. And that's my huge debate and problem with this deck. But anyway, it's gone away. So Wolf, uh, you never summon this monster. I don't think I've ever had this monster on the field. If maybe once. Uh, it's 20, uh, uh, 20, 000, a 2,000 uh, beater. That uh, inflicts pier all your Lunai monsters with pierce damage, so that's nice. It can be helpful when, you know, your opponent sits there on a Marshmallow and you literally have no way of getting dealing with Marshmallow. Like, if your opponent sets a Marshmallow on, and it's just attack. So all you do is attack, so you're screwed. But no, you use it for its Pendulum effect, which is kind of like a Miracle Fusion. Um, you cannot Pendulum summon monsters except for Lunai Knights. Eh, who cares? Alright. Uh, once per turn, you can fuse summon one Lunai monster from your extract by banishing monsters you control or having your graveyard. It'd be nice if it could be like, you know... Send monsters you control a graveyard or banish because you know it's like hey I control the monsters can I fuse like no you gotta banish them too so it's a miracle fusion it helps you get out uh, deeper and deeper to your place I, I I like the premise of the deck I just wish that they get a couple more cards to you know round it out better next you're on triple tiger uh, tiger's good it's a pendulum scale you can go ahead and target one lunar light monster in your graveyard special summon effects are negated can't attack but who cares you're probably just gonna fuse with it anyway. And uh, it's field effect, I believe, it's in this card in the field is destroyed by battle for, or by card effect. You could target one Lunalite monster in your graveyard and special summon it. So, all revival, totally good. Pendulum scales are between one and five, and of course, Wolf is six. So yeah, you're not going to be pendulum summoning that. Uh, the deck does it really need pendulum scales? No, not really. I mean, the pendulum monsters do they serve the pendulum? No. Uh, the reason why, and you probably wonder, like, well, why, why are the pendulum monsters in here? Uh, she's part of the Lancers on the anime, uh, Serena, and. Uh, Renji gave everybody pendulum-based cards, I think, except for Shun, who didn't want them. Shun's like, no, I'm good. I'll just stick with my Raid Raptor. So, yeah, but, you know, everybody who's on who's a Lancer has pendulum-based cards. So, this is her pendulum-based card. So, there you go. All right, moving on. We run triple uh, Black Sheep. Black Sheep is probably the best card in the core of the deck, really. Uh, all of its effects are really good and helpful, so you can uh, discard this card and activate one effects. You can either grab a moon, uh, Lunalite monster from your graveyard out to your hand. I don't think I've ever done that, to tell you the truth. I don't think I've ever done that once, just because why would I want to switch out Sheep for anybody else when Sheep is the best one to have in my hand? Or you can discard to add a Poly. Uh, generally, I don't want to do that play just because I'd rather just get the Poly naturally, but... Yeah, so you can do that. So if you need to, you can do that. And the last effect, which is also great, discard sense of good as, as a fusion material you can add to your hand, one of the Lunite monsters from Gaia, except for Sheep, or one face-up Lunite Pendulum monster from your extract to your hand. So, I don't know why you would ever use that second one, but getting back your Fusion Maternal is nice, because you'll, we'll, uh, you'll see when we go into the Fusion monster. So, definitely you run black, uh, Triple Black Sheep. If you're not running Triple Black Sheep, you're not playing the deck correctly. Uh, next, we run Triple White Rabbit. Red Rabbit's also nice. It's another Monster Reborn. There's a ton of Monster Reborns. Not only are you a Monster Reborn, but you're a Monster Reborn, and now they got a Monster Reborn spell, so it's a ton of just revive your monsters back and then refuse with them. But there's one particular card that I think they're missing, which I want to talk about, talk about like usual, and hopefully that they get it. But um, this one's also good. So it's not something you could go ahead and target one of your Lunar Monsters. You're going to have some in defense position. Effects are still there, unlike uh, Tiger, so you can still activate their effects, but they're just in the defense position. And the second effect is nice too, so once per turn you can target uh, spells and traps your opponent controls up to a number of other Lunar Knight monsters you control and return them to the hand. While they're not destroyed, and that'd be great if you po actually pop the back row, you can kind of move them out of the way and, you know, be like, hey, get rid of the mirror forces and stuff like that, because I'm about to get in with my attack. I think it actually won me a duel, this rabbit moving that back row, out, back row out of the way, so that's nice. Next we run Triple Crimson Fog. Uh, at first, I was kind of iffy about this card, but I, I immediately fell in love with this card. This card is the goodness. It really is. And if you're not running Crimson Fox and you're Luna Lights, you should. Uh, this card is sent to by a card effect. You can just target one of your opponent's monsters, and it becomes zero attack to the end of the turn. So that helps. 
Uh, this deck is all about attacking, getting the damage in, getting the kill, uh, going at the throat, and <laughs> Guns and Fox helps. Just, hey, drop that monster down to zero, and then I'm going to attack it a whole bunch of times, which is pretty much what this deck does. And uh, the second effect is also very helpful. During either player's turn, when a card or effect is activated that targets one of your Moon Knight monsters, you can banish this card. Both players gain a thousand life points, which is kind of mute, but, um, you know, often you can summon these uh, Moon Knight Fusion monsters. She can't be destroyed by battle. She can't be destroyed by card effect. So... Let me go ahead and just make it so if you try to target me, I'm just going to negate you. It saved me a handful of times in one we duel, so definitely some Crimson Fox action. And then I'm running two of each of the ones that I find not to be as good. So if this card is supposed to summon, you can go ahead and uh, double its attack, uh, Blue Cat, but it's kind of, yeah. I, I don't think I've ever done that, or if I've done it, I've done it once. Like, really, um, you, you, I generally don't pendulum summon with the deck, despite the pendulum scales. Like, I, I'll play, like, maybe like two of her in the pendulum scale, or two of her, but I don't think I've ever had both of them in each pendulum scale to pendulum summon until you summon her. Uh, if you summon this back with this, it affects him against you're not getting that. So I guess you could summon it back with Rabbit if you have that play. And then even its even its other effect is kind of lackluster. If this card in the field is destroyed by battle or by card effect, first summon a Lunalite Monster from your deck. I wish you said add it to my hand. Why would I want to summon a Lunalite Monster from my deck? Like, what am I going to summon? More of you? Like, nah, really. I just find her to be really mute. If it said add it from my, you know... Uh, add it from my deck to my hand like a like a sand gam, then sure, but if you're just gonna be a tomato, I mean, none of these monsters I really want to summon and put on my field. None of them, so, meh. Uh, and then, uh, double butterfly. Butterfly kind of has synergy with the cat. This card, uh, you can send this card from your hand to grave graveyard, target when you let my monsters get down attack. That's pretty nice, but still, you know, doesn't help with my plays real much. I'm just kind of taking a neg for a, a thousand attack increase. No, thank you. I already neg enough of this deck. And, um, you can go ahead and bench this card from your graveyard, especially when one Moon Knight monster from your hand. So, summon that cat and get your double attack. Alright, awesome. So, yeah. And then, one King of the Swamp. Uh, this is number generator. This is literally trying to exploit the system. Uh, there's been time and time and time again where I don't have any fucking polys, can't do shit with the damn deck. And I was like, you know what? Screw it, let's number generate. So, I'm running one King of the Swamp with one fusion stage, number generator, given to me, so I can get that poly. Yes. I will do, I will get that dirty with the number generator. I'll preach about the number generator and I will take advantage of the system just to make sure I get the cards that I need. So, uh, yeah, if you, if you don't got poly, you ain't doing shit with this deck, and that's what I can't stand about just the fusion mechanic in general. You know, the fusion mechanic's really weak because not only do you uh, have to have the materials to fuse and take the neck, but you have to generally have the card polymerization. If you don't got it, you ain't doing shit, you know? I mean, there's way more tuners and non-tuners than there is specifically just polymerization. It's not like I can play, like, 20 polymerizations and always get it. No, it doesn't work like that, so, yeah. Well, and same thing with the rituals, that's also a weak mechanic, but, you know, seeing, that's the, probably one of the easiest mechanics, just, I have two of the same level, they don't have to be anything, just two of the same level, bam, that's an, that's an XC, but, yeah, so, the struggles. Uh, triple Tanky, because these are actually Beast Warriors, so, of course, thus Tanky, get the search on, no complaints there. Poly, you run as many polys as we can, because you want a poly on top of poly, we're on top of poly, we'll get to that when we get to the fusion monsters. Uh, fusion recovery, just a mwah card. If you're not playing, running it at Moonlights, mm, run it. It's really great. Uh, you get to go ahead and target a poly and one of your fusion material monsters uh, that we use the fusion summon, add back to your uh, hand. So, you use fusion summon, po uh, fusion recovery, get that poly, which of course you always want your poly back in this deck, and a monster, and then you can go ahead and probably refuse again with just what you just got off of fusion recovery. So, yep, triple fusion recovery off him. Uh, we're running Galaxy SoundCloud. Uh, you guys know that how much I love Twin Twister, but the reason why I don't run it in here is because there's not anything I want to pitch, you know? Like, all these monsters, I need every single monster I can grab my hands on to get out the best fusion. I want my tankies, I want my polys, I want my fusion recoveries, you know? Uh, I I want all my polys, anything that gets me poly, I want all my back rows, so there's nothing I want to pitch for the Twin Twister, so that's why I went with Galaxy SoundCloud. Well, I could go with the MST. Uh, there's generally not any, like, back row that I want to hit during my opponent's turn. It's mostly back row, clear up your back row, and allow me to go off and push. So that's why I went to Galaxy Cyclone for the double pop, if I ever uh, get that off. Uh, I already talked about Fusion Day, so uh, we're trap. Uh, we run two Moonlight Reincarnations. It's a really great card, it really is. It's just, it doesn't get off that often, and you can only activate one once per turn, and it clogs. So that's why I put it down to two. And it's slow, it's slow. You know, if a monster monsters you control, be sure a battle by card effect, you can add up to two moon line monsters from your deck to your hand. So your monster dies, you play this, so you're going next two, but then, you know, reincarnation's like, hey, you know, get two. So you even that, which is great. You can search for any moon line monsters, just, you know, it's a trap card. So I gotta set it 
then I have to play some Lunar Knight monster, or just monsters in general. And there's been times where I even feed King of the Swamp just to make sure. Then I gotta have my monster get killed by battle or by card effect. Then I play it. Then I start, it's just really slow, and I can like wait once, one once per turn. If you gotta play multiple, like if you kill like one of my monsters, and I could be like, oh, you kill one of my monsters, chain reincarnation, chain reincarnation, chain reincarnation, get six Lunar Knight monsters. Let's go. But no, so that's the reason why I dropped it down to two. It was getting kind of cloggy at three, so I decided to drop it down to two. Then. The Trap Gate, Let's Go, Warning, Vanities, and Solemn Notices. So if you don't know what these guys do, then study up on yu gi -Mons. All right, so extra deck. Uh, we're running two Leo Dancer. Uh, you, if you bust her out, you pretty much win, because she's that really that powerful. Uh, she's made with... Actually, I should probably go backwards. Actually, all right, let's go backwards. Uh, uh, three Cat Dancers. You're probably going to go into their mouth. She's just made with two Lunar Monsters. She cannot be sure about it, which is nice. 24 Beater. Uh, once per turn, you contribute one... Uh, during your main phase one, you contribute one other Lunar Knight monster, so it can attack twice. Uh, uh, your opponent's monsters can't be destroyed battle, uh, so you can attack all the monsters twice during each battle phase. So, yeah. Uh, the monster one, yeah, once during. I was gonna say, wait, they can't. Their monsters can't be destroyed. Period. I just didn't read right. Once during each turn. So pretty much, you just go after all their monsters twice. So just attack, attack. You're dead. Attack, attack. You're dead. Attack, attack. You're dead. And then, for some odd reason, when this card declares an attack, it inflicts a whole whopping 100 damage to your opponent. Woo! No, but seriously, that's just the first uh, Lunalight feature monster you're going to go into. And then just builds on top of that. So, next, we have Panther Dancer, which is Cat, which we just talked about, plus one Lunalight monster. So, that's where Fusion Recovery comes handy. So, you go ahead and poly two Lunar Knights, summon that freaking Cat Dancer. Fusion Recovery, get that poly back, get a Lunalight back, and then you can just go ahead and fuse right into Panther Dancer, who's a little bit stronger. So, Panther Dancer is 2800. Uh, it cannot be destroyed by card effects this time. So, can't be destroyed by battle, can't be destroyed by card effects. So, it depends on which one. Uh, they're both good in their own situations, but generally I feel more safe with Cat Dancer because Panther Dancer, I mean, can't destroy by card effects. You're probably just going to attack over me. And that's the one weakness with this deck. They got some beaters, but you attack over them and there's the ain't shit they're really doing, right? So, uh,. This one's effect is pretty much this one's effect, except I don't need a tribute. Just once per turn, during your main phase one, you activate the effect, your opponent's spawn once your opponents can't be destroyed, and you attack them all. And then I believe if you like kill a monster you gain two hundred attack or something like that. Can you like scroll down for me? Alright, there I guess that's good enough. Uh if this card destroys the opponent's monster it gains two hundred attack until the end of the battle phase. So, you know, you go attack, attack, kill one of the monsters, gain two hundred attack, 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 gain two hundred attack, attack, attack. But it's only until the end of the battle phase, which sucks. It'd be nice if we get to keep that nice juicy attack, but no. And then last but not least, let's go back and talk about Leo Dancer. So Leo Dancer is Panther Dancer, but instead it's plus two Luna Knight monsters. So you need Panther who you already use, so it's two monsters, then you use that monster with another monster, and then you use this monster with two more monsters. So it takes a lot of resources to bust out this Leo Dancer. But if you bust her out and you can keep her alive and well, you pretty much win because she's she's very powerful. Uh she cannot be targeted or destroyed by opponent's card effects, period. So uh she she's Almost untouchable, she really is. You know, a 3500 beater that can't be targeted or destroyed by your opponent's card effects, the struggle is real. And uh, her effect is just blatantly, she can make up to two attacks. Uh, uh, she can make a second attack during battle fights. That's it, there's no stipulation, that's it. She just attacks twice, even directly. So there goes 7,000 life points, she hits you twice directly. Uh, then once per turn, this card attacked a, attacked a monster at the end of the damage step. You can destroy all special summon monsters your opponent control. So. I guess if your opponent controls a special monster that you couldn't kill, attack number eight, you get to wipe it. So, there you go, but still. So, uh, mostly when I bust her out, I won. I think I, I lost a couple of duels because they found some way of getting over her. Generally, dropping her attack or just attacking over her. I mean, Utopia the Lightning just wrecks her. It really does. But, uh, still, it's a pretty powerful monster. It's the one thing that I was looking forward to when playing this deck. It's just busting out Leon Dancer as much as possible. Uh, sometimes I did, sometimes I did not, and it's definitely because of that. I was always missing that second Moonlight monster. I had the Panther, I had the Poly, I had one, but I could never get that second one. And generally, you're going to be using someone here with, like, Wolf, because you'll probably have the Moonlight monster in the graveyard, you can have, like, Panther Dancer on the field or in the graveyard, just banish all of that, then bam, there's Leo. Then, uh, there you can see a couple four, so Castell, Dark Rebellion, Cowboy, uh, Zen Main, Zalu card, uh, Break Sword, super expensive, then there's some two, so you got Dead Gustav Phoenix. I think I would have won a duel. OTK or FTK my opponent if he didn't I think he veiled my Dying Gusto Phoenix or something or Fingers Chamber or something so I couldn't get that attack in to go for game and then uh this guy, this rank two guy, who bounces things, I think. Yeah. So there you go. So uh I definitely think that the the monster born will help, you know. 
uh, like I said, there's been times where I'm just like, man, I wish I had one more Loonlight monster. Well, I'll just go ahead and play the Monster Born. Bam, there's a Loonlight monster. Go ahead and banish the card and... Uh, what's that? I think it banished the banished the spell card, discard card, and then search for any Loonlight monster. Like, that's pretty powerful as well. Uh, you know, you can't technically search for Wolf, but you can use that card to search for Wolf. And, yep, so that's good. Uh, but the one card I wish that the deck had, and I will say it time and time again, uh, pretty much a Fluffle Cat. Like, if you don't know what Fluffle Cat does, which uh, if you haven't seen the deck profile for Fluffles yesterday, you should go back. But uh, I wanted them to have a card just like this. This card is sent to the graveyard as a huge material. You can target one polymerization in your graveyard, add it to your hand. That's all I want for this deck. Because generally what they need. If I'm going to go ahead and go poly and fuse two of my Lunite monsters into a freaking cat, then how come I can't have one of my monsters be like, hey, get that poly back, get my poly right back, and then fuse again. So I'm hoping that they go ahead and Lunar Lights get their own Fluffle Cat. Of course, they can't have their own Lunar Light Cat. That's as this is a cat. You know? But uh, something, something, just copy and paste the effect. Literally. Literally. Uh, just copy and paste the effect and then have the name be fucking for Lunar Lights. That's all I want. That's all I want, and this would help this deck immensely. It really would. So, uh, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and uh, call that for uh, the deck profile. It took long enough to try to go into detail about everything to as much as I wanted to. But, uh, yeah, the deck is still just weak. It's one trick pony, and if it can't attack over something, you know, if your opponent drops like a Beals on you, you're fucked. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, if you guys want to go ahead and take the deck and do whatever you want with it, hey, more power to you. Uh, and hopefully it gets more cards, and maybe it can come back on Daily Duels eventually, but for right now, I'm okay with it being gone. So, uh, if you haven't already, make sure you check out the special video of, uh, Necros. Necros are now on Daily Duels for Friday, so I've never played Necros in my life, so I'm gonna need some training. So go ahead and watch the first training video, and eventually we'll get to me doing some actual playing. But yeah, if you haven't seen that already, be, be sure to. So, uh, there we go. We are done with this week with Daily Duels. All the deck profiles, all the new decks. Uh, we're going to be having a lot of fun this next coming month or so. So, uh, yeah, just continue to support me, and I will continue to uh, provide you guys with that awesome content. So thanks for watching, thanks for all the support, and yeah, see you guys next time we do a whole bunch of deck profiles. Thanks for watching.